So if you have found yourself at this video, prayerfully it's because you are a Christian. And if you are not a Christian, it's important that you know that this is an invitation for you to acknowledge that your lifestyle, to acknowledge that you are to acknowledge that you are in need of God. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. And he died for your sins. And it is his desire that you repent, meaning that you confess of your sins with a desire with a desire to change a desire to make different decisions a desire to have your life truly transformed Jesus can come to fill those areas of your life that have separated you from God and have brought you to a place where you feel empty and feel void and it is true that you are empty and void of truth and Jesus will walk with you. He will walk with you for the rest of your life. You then desire to be born again, to be, to be actually baptized, fully, fully placed in the water. That is your sign. That is you communicating to God Almighty that you are being baptized. You are you old self is dying and you are coming out as a new person and you've been born again in Christ Jesus and then you need to be you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost and as he lives through you he keeps you connected with God it is essential that you make these decisions it is essential that you position yourself to Make yourself willing and available to receive God in this way. You need to walk with God because the reality is if you were to be very honest with yourself, you don't make good decisions. A lot of us, a lot of you all out there think that you're good people because you do good things for people because you go out into the world and you smile and you hold doors for people and you let people go in front of you in traffic and you, you take good care of your kids, you buy them nice things, you spend time with them, throwing the football at them, you get them involved in sports and take them to do sporting activities and you're very involved in their lives. But yet, you're not positioning them to meet their maker. You're not positioning them to come into a, a relationship with God. So God comes into our lives to, to redefine love and truth and, and purpose and fulfillment. And as you, you accept God into your heart, he allows you to be aware of his righteousness. And as you desire to live out that righteousness in your life that keeps you in right standing with him. But we also must understand that becoming a Christian does not negate the fact that you are still going to, you're still going to have circumstances in life that are going to require you you're gonna have circumstances in life that can be trying, that can be challenging. The word, the word of God says that the trying of your faith bringeth patience. And that we ought to let patience have its perfect work. And I think it says so that we are perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So staying with God, trusting in God, leaning on God in times of adversity, 
Because righteousness, the Bible says that Jesus spoke to his disciples in the, in the Beatitudes and he said that blessed are those are per, who are persecuted for righteousness sake. So righteousness is, always, is not always going to place you, it's going to place you in right standing with God, but it's not always going to place you in right standing with man. But God still wants you to hunger and thirst after that righteousness so that you are filled with that because you want to be right with God. You want to be right with God. You don't want to idolize relationships, idolize life to the degree that you are separating yourself from God because you're compromising and you're, you're agreeing to things and doing things that God that. God is not that God is not classifying as obedience. That is, it's not putting you in the in the place to be an example, and it's not showing that you are striving and that you are truly seeking first the kingdom and His righteousness, as we are called to. So Jesus said that in the world you're going to have tribulation, but He said. But it is his desire that we have peace. He said that in him it is his desire that we might have peace. And that he said that we are to be of good cheer because he has overcome the world. So the time spent with God, prayer, worship, the word, fellowship with the fellow believers, that is all time that you are fellowshipping with God. Those are all things that we do to invite God into our lives, to invite God into our heart, to invite God into our minds. Prayer is not a means for us to solicit and re or request things only because we can idolize the relationship with God be simply because of him giving us things versus us actually having him in our hearts, actually us having a mind that considers his goodness considers his holiness, considers his righteousness and his 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 sovereignty in the world, in our lives, considering the kingdom. We can idolize the fact that God answers our prayers by giving us requests. And then we can start to form a relationship with God based on that. I go to God because I want things. I go to God because I want life to be a certain way. And I know God is the only one that can give it to me. So that's when we begin to feel blessed is we're blessed because God is giving us our way versus I love God because when I obey him, it pleases him. I love God because he is good. He is good. But even when he doesn't do what I want, he's still good. Even when I'm required to wait, to be patient, then he's still good. God still has to be good. So the, the, the focus is fellowship with God. The prayer, worship, and the word. Prayer is time spent with God to fellowship with God, to become one with God, become in alignment with the will of God. It's just to, it's to be with God. We read our word because we want to keep our minds on God. We listen to the word of God because we want to we want to we want to be with, we want to be in sync with God. We want God to be streaming through our thoughts. We want God to be to be active in our hearts. We want the spirit of God to truly flow through us freely. So we position ourselves in all of these ways to to fellowship with God. He wants our joy to be full because it's joy that makes us strong. So he wants us to be of good cheer because he's overcome. And he said that we were overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the words of our testimony. So he is making us overcomers too. Every day that we choose Jesus, every day we, we, we cast down those thoughts Every day that we ask for our heart to be purified of the lust, the fear, the pride, the unbelief that wants to rise up and tell us that our efforts are of no value. Every day that we choose God, we're growing in, in strength. We're growing in 
focus, we're growing in concentration. He's releasing more wisdom, more understanding. He's releasing more grace. He has mercy on us on the days that we don't seek him according to the calling, according to his will for our lives. But every day that we choose Jesus, we receive more power from him to obey, more motivation to stay focused. How vain of a life of it is, as is it to just get up and go, just go to work and just go through the motions. Most of us are attributing our relationship with God and it's no different than a person who believes in something false. I think that I'm blessed because I have a big house, a big car, or a nice car. I have a bank account with money in it and I can travel the world and go on vacation whenever I want. Understand that there are Christians out there, some of you out there that, that base your relationship on that. That's how I know that God accepts my life because he lets me do what I want or because I have all of these things available to me. I have, I have life working in my favor. So that's contingent upon the relationship with me and God. God is accepting me because of that. But as I said, the Muslim has the same thing. The, the Buddhist has the same thing. The Seventh-day Adventist, the Mormon, the Catholic, Jehovah's Witness, they have the same thing that you have. You're basing your relationship with God on the same things that they have. What is the distinction? Where is the distinction? So we're not basing our relationship on God on the fact that he's holy and that he's righteous and that he's making us holy and making us righteous. And I know that I'm growing in my relationship because my desire to please him is elevating. My desire for his righteousness is deepening. My, will, my, my, my love for him and my desire to be with him in his presence and to be with those that also love him and have given their life to him, all of that is beginning to strengthen. I'm beginning to grow in, the, in those different areas of my life. I don't base what I have I don't base my relationship on God with what I have, but I base it on who he is. I base it on who he is. So God wants us to be of good cheer because Jesus has overcome. Jesus has overcome for you and I if you are a, if you are a Christian. And that's something to be happy about. That's something to, 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 to maintain joy for and let that joy keep us strong. Because this world wants to pull you and, and, make, and make you respond in your emotions. Life does not stop and ask you what you want. Life is going on. And you have to live your life. And, and, it, and it's the safest place to be with God. In his will. Wanting to stay in his will. And obey him at all costs, that is gonna solidify your faith and make you strong in God. You can go get more degrees, you can go and, 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 and do whatever you feel you wanna to do to please God. But if it's not according to the voice of God, it's not as a, the things you are doing. If it's not a direct result of you obeying the spirit of God. And if you don't have Jesus living inside of you. And that's the, and that's, and that's, you just continue to go up, go wake up, go to sleep. And you are absent of the Holy spirit living in you and living for you. Then you're going to make decisions that could, permanently separate you from God. And that's something that you need to think about. It's something that you need to think about. Jesus has everything that you need. And he's willing to convince you of that. But you have to make 
intentional decisions that that's what you want and that's what you desire. And you're going to have to deny yourself. You're going to have to deny yourself and you're going to have to look and look at your life and realize that he's not a part of it. And you're going to have to start making decisions that invite him. Because it's not his will that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. But all are not going to come to repentance. As many are called, but few are chosen. You want to be among the few. You want to strive to enter in. Today needs to be the day that you strive to enter in. Renounce the world. Renounce your love for the world and strive to enter in. It's a straight game. Because many are going to seek to enter in and then would not be able you not be among one of those. So accept Jesus. Accept Jesus as your Savior. There's space for you to repent and to get right with God so that you can be prepared for his return. And so when you see him, you can see him as Lord and Savior and is not one and not one that has to say depart.